session focuses on answering big questions with mobile movement data. I'm going to highlight how an automotive client could use this solution to make more informed decisions with MobileScapes. So let's jump in. My name is Casey Price and I run our U.S. practice. I've also been working with clients on both sides of the border using MobileScapes for a number of years and thought you'd like a brief overview. So what are mobile movement data? Mobile movement data is anonymized permission-based data collected from location-enabled apps on your phone. We actually capture unique, persistent, anonymized device IDs, and we capture the date, time, and location for each observation, again, when one of those apps is on. Um, the data is updated daily, and it's 100% privacy compliant. We actually capture unique visitors, as well as the number of times they visit. The information is available at the six-digit postal code level, and that allows us to link it to over 20,000 data variables we have in our library. And we also have access to over 40,000 geofences, but more on that in a moment. Doing a bit of a deeper dive on mobile movement data, we actually have the ability to identify where visitors reside. Um, and what we do is when we actually identify where a device is between 5 p.m. and 9 a.m., we'll say that's where somebody lives. But we take that information, that coordinate pair, and we drag it to the closest six-digit postal code centroid. That really allows us to protect the privacy of individuals because it anonymizes where that, where that kind of ping came from. But it allows us to, to use and incorporate advanced analytics that's in our Envision platform. So at this point, I'm going to jump into the, the software to give you a more tangible feel for how our clients use this, this data set. So we're in Envision now. This is a web-based application that is used by about 1,500 clients on both sides of the border. Um, we always encourage our clients to import their own customer data into the system to answer questions like, who are my customers? How do I reach them effectively? And where can I find more people like them? Um, the system also allows you to create executive reports on those customers or on trade areas, and it allows you to do some advanced mapping. So I'm going to show you some examples of that. Let's actually go in and do a mobile extract for a Porsche dealership. So bear with me here while I jump to the screen. So I've actually looking at our mobile extract data tool now, and I'm going to select uh, a geofence from our geofence library. Now, if I didn't have a geofence library, I could just as easily as draw a geofence and pull out all the people that visited that location. But this allows me to scale the types of questions I can ask. So. In this case, I've now selected every Porsche dealership across Canada. If I hit continue, I can define a request that would allow me to identify who visited a Porsche dealership in the last year, or the last month, or the last day. For this example, I'm really just going to select uh, one Porsche dealership. This is a Porsche, Porsche Center in Oakville, and we're going to do a deeper dive on who these people are, and so on. When a mobile extract is created, we actually create a point file. This point file has been placed on this map, and this is a basically a visitor heat map of who visited Porsche Center in Oakville. The red and orange areas highlight where you're getting capturing most of your visitors for this particular dealership. You can see with this logo here. So we've got uh, some hot spots around the lake in Oakville where you've got some very high income neighborhoods. You've also got some hot spots in, in other parts of Southeast Oakville as well as some of the higher income neighborhoods of Milton. Jumping into some of the reporting that's available on these visitors, we can start to look at a distance decay report. This actually illustrates how far people are willing to travel to get to your location. So for Porsche Center Oakville, if I go down this and interpret the results, I would say I'm capturing 70% of the people that visited during 2019 within a 35 minute drive. This information can be used to delineate an accurate trade area, uh, as well as look at market penetration and so on. And so when we actually look at this, we can see by the shape of this curve, how far people are willing to drive. And you can see that people are willing to drive quite far. This curve would look very different than say that of a convenience store, which might, might top out around the three to five minute mark. Moving into other reports, we can also profile who these people are through the lens of PRISM. So in this case, we've grouped all of Canada into one of 68 different groups. And we can see here that first class families ranked fifth out of all segments across Canada represent 11.5% of everybody that went to that dealership. So our clients use this information to identify who their customers are, where to find more people like them, and how to reach them effectively. Other reporting allows us to dive into the demographics of the people that visited 
this Porsche dealership. When I say this to visitors, it's actually the neighborhoods that these visitors came from. And so we can see that these people are visiting from neighborhoods that have lots of children um, and maintainer ages of between 35 and 49. And as we build our story, not surprisingly, almost you know 79% of the visitors come from neighborhoods that live in single detached homes, not surprising for Oakville. Um, they make an above average household income, even when benchmarked against that trade area. So my benchmark here is actually a trade area based on that distance to K report earlier. We also see, not surprisingly, that 40% uh, of the, the visitors come from neighborhoods where people have at least a university degree. And occupations, top occupations here include sales and service, business and finance, and management. So uh, stay in school, kids. Building out our learnings uh, about the Porsche Center in, in Oakville, and keep in mind this is a five-minute exercise, we see that 49.8% of the visitors came from neighborhoods that uh, belong to a visible minority group, of which 21.7% classified themselves as South Asian, and another 6.2% classified themselves as Chinese. Think of the learnings that we've, we've taken from this very quick study. People use our social values uh, data set to actually look at the creative and the engagement strategy. What messaging should you have when approaching these people? Uh, attraction for crowds, scores high with the people that visited this dealership, as well as personal optimism. So think about that when you're building creative to attract people to this dealership. Building on what we've learned, we can also identify media preferences. And so in this case, we would say the visitors to, to this dealership are heavy internet users, and when online, they tend to visit, not surprisingly, automotive uh, websites, real estate, gambling, and sports. Again, keep this in mind for the creative as well as the, the media channel preferences of your clients. So this has been a very brief overview. Um, by all means, if, if you hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to somebody at Embryonics Analytics. We're more than happy to answer additional questions. Thank you very much for your time today.